Candyland. 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 Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm going to talk to you about Candyland, which is coming to theaters and digital on January 6, 2023. Despite my opening, this is not a sequel to Candyman. This is its own self-contained indie film. It is an indie kind of horror drama that has a lot more going on and also has some really interesting underlying themes. My hot take is I think you should rent it. It has a really great style. I like the characters. I like the music. And it has a nice balance between drama and horror. It kind of goes off the rails at the end. Um, it has a few disturbing scenes, but it's a horror movie. You kind of expect that. So overall, I think you should rent it. I think it's it's definitely worth checking out eventually. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the film. A few things I liked and a few things I didn't like. So Candyland stars a group of kind of, I don't know, they're, they're, they're friends. They live at this truck stop. And they perform sex services for people passing through. They call it Candyland. That's the code word for this truck stop. Um, and when people come by, they offer them safe, discreet sex services. But as you expect from any sort of horror film, things start to go wrong. And they have to figure out, like, what's going on? How do they stay safe when a, you know, killer is kind of among them, around them, stalking them? And so that is the, the basic premise of the film. So things I liked about this film. The first is, you know, I'll, I'll call it the simplicity of it. Look, it's an indie film, but they did a really smart job making this indie film. Everything is pretty much set at this truck stop. They don't try to do too much. Uh, the cast of characters is pretty small, but they're supposed to be kind of a tight-knit group. So you got a nice small cast of characters, really good chemistry between everyone. And, and all the events happen at and around this truck stop, which makes it kind of a really perfect setting for this type of, like, isolation horror film second thing i really loved is the style like it has definitely an old school feel to it um there a lot of the communication is done over cb radios there's not a ton of like smartphones in there there's little i think 80s cues in kind of the credits the credits are kind of like hot pink uh some of the music feels a little bit techno feels a little bit old school so overall it has a really great style despite um, being kind of a more of a budget indie film and the third thing I really loved is the music the music like I mentioned has this really great kind of like techno feel to it it really uh, does a good job with helping with the style and it heightens some of the sinister aspects about this film which I thought was another great aspect to this movie so things I didn't really love about this movie the first is you know, I think I'll call it the slow start the film does a good job of establishing all the characters and I think it takes its time really building them up and getting their relationships down but for a horror film it does take a very long time before any of the horror happens. And so, you know, I was expecting maybe something more drastic to happen early on. And, and some of that was, I think, them playing. Like, there was definitely, like, a suspense aspect to it uh, in some of these interactions. So I, I think part of it was, was playing with us, but it did feel like maybe something could have started a little bit earlier. It took a little bit to kind of get going. Now, that being said, the second thing I didn't love is it kind of goes off the rails towards the end. It After it does get going, it feels like it doesn't stop. Uh, and, you know, I know I complained that it took a while to get going, but then afterwards, it almost just kind of goes into berserker mode. There's there, there's kill after kill after kill, and they happen very, very quickly. I don't know if that was budget. I don't know if that was by design. Uh, but it feels like all the suspense that you had at the start is just kind of gone once the, the film gets going. Uh, and the last thing I didn't love, part of this is all related, is that there's a certain amount of suspension of disbelief you have to have in this film. Look, it's, it's a movie. It's a horror film. There's always going to be suspension of disbelief. But uh, like I said, the, 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 the bodies kind of stack up fairly quickly and no one really notices this. I mean, no, everyone knows that there's a killer around, but I feel like there's bloody bodies in multiple cars around the place and no one sees them. And the, the main killer you would expect to have lots of blood on them because of what they're doing. And it just kind of like, it doesn't get on them. No one notices it. It feels like there are some maybe, I don't know, convenient story things that happen or just like convenient omissions that hurt a little bit of my enjoyment as the film gets going. Now look, I still think this is a rental. I still think it's something you should check out eventually. And the film actually does have a pretty interesting kind of conclusion that uh, I enjoyed. And I liked kind of some of the parallels that the conclusion had with uh, events that happened in the film. So Ultimately, definitely check it out at some point. Uh, that is Candyland. It comes to theaters and digital on January 6, 2022. So you can check it out in select theaters or you can check it out in the comfort of your own home. And thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.